not keep going Undercover, no, he ain't gonna show it He thinks that I don't know it Never let it slip, no, I ain't gonna blow it No, no He comes up empty-handed All right, our last place he landed There goes my mind, it travels Watch my map, I plan on travel He thinks I'm blind, he's lost his mind And I'm the victim, oh, but not this time tonight All of my demons come out to play Thinking that I ain't home Hiding in the shadow Got my finger on the trigger Oh no, he isn't alone Put her down, put him in his place Never will forget the look on his face He knew I had one more round Point blank range, I took him down no, He thinks I'm blind He's lost his mind and no, I'm the victim, oh But not this time tonight All of my demons come out to play Just can't be How's it going? I appreciate you spinning my song for me. Uh, this latest song here, Crime of Passion, didn't come very easy for me. It, uh, I thought it was complete two weeks ago, but when I brought it home and listened to it, I thought to myself, I knew I could write better than that. So I rewrote the whole thing, and Thursday brought it back to my producer, and, uh, and we nailed it. I pretty much finished it then, and I just released it today, this morning. Um... You can find me on YouTube. That's uh, the best way to find me is on YouTube. I am out of Tampa, Florida. And again, I appreciate you spinning our songs. And you have a great day. Well, thank you for joining me. I'm Michael Tobin, your lookout guy on the Lookout Guy podcast. That was Tracy Bickford, Crime of Passion. Wow, what a what an awesome song. And as Tracy says, go to YouTube and type in her name, Tracy Bickford, with a C K B I C K F O R D on YouTube. And uh following is going to be another song by Tracy Bickford and Imran Ahmed from Project X it's called Rattle or Higher Above and you could also go to uh, Imran Ahmed A-H-A-H-M-E-D is how you spell his last name Uh, you could find the song and videos on both of their websites Imran Ahmed Project X and Tracy Bickford 
or higher above. But the song Crime of Passion, I've been anticipating the completion of that. And as she said, it was released finally uh, Tuesday, the 29th of March. And it seems that that song is a sequel to a 2020 release of Tracy Bickford, a country indie artist from Florida, Tampa Bay. And I guess this episode of The Lookout Guy is kind of like a a coast-to-coast because I've got another couple songs from my good friend here in San Diego, Hot Rod Jerry Demink. He builds hot rods, and he also uh, trains people in guitar. He's a guitar teacher, so he's got some a good list of students. So if you want to look up Jerry Demink, uh, just go to Facebook, look up Jerry Demink, and uh, you can check out his music. And uh, if you're local in the area, you can. Uh, if you want to learn guitar, look him up. So, got a couple songs from Jerry Demink, Chicago Blues, and Ghost Riders. I saw him last night, Thursday. Today's Friday. A miracle of miracles. I've got today off. Wow. Got off early yesterday. And man, I, I, I work so hard and uh, get pretty tired. But I've been able to uh, come to you live uh, on a weekly basis, which is pretty darn good for a podcaster. And you know my hopes and my dreams to uh, be live podcasting anytime and anywhere. And, uh, you know, there's a thing called five-year plans. What's your five-year plan to be an entrepreneur? But I've got a five-year plan. And after about five years, I think I would, I would, will be able to, uh, be on the road podcasting on the spot anywhere because, you know, my background is, uh, pretty much disaster response, street preaching, ministering to the homeless and uh i've done a little preaching in churches here and there and i'm open for engagements for that um but before getting into higher above as promised on my social media site i was going to do a a second part to what i mentioned in one of my previous podcasts um, about the famous Oscars slap, uh, you know, I, I I had the TV turned on, but before it came on, I began my podcast titled "Instead of the Oscars." That was my episode uh, title, "Instead of the Oscars," and it was on Oscars night, and I told people you know you should have listened to it but you know i get so many downloads i go to the statistics and there's like all kinds of downloads and it'll take some time if i want to gather my statistics and make a cover letter and try to get sponsors and things like that but just pray about that to be a full-time podcaster it, it it takes sponsorship of some kind and i don't like those canned commercials that podcast uh, platforms offer and right at the beginning or some of them in the middle of when you're talking all of a sudden a commercial will pop up and it's kind of annoying uh, the way uh, canned commercials are uh, done on platforms but two things I promised I was going to Mention, mention again about the uh, famous Oscar slap, and my thing. And the second thing is Ukraine. And uh, first, Ukraine. For those of us who are praying for the people of Ukraine, uh, contributing to different ministries and organizations, that is an awesome thing. And but more specifically, those of us who are praying for them, it, it does help to know how to pray. F- as we ought, as the Bible says, you know, and that passage, uh, it's talking about the gifts of the Spirit and praying in the Spirit. When you pray in the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit prays through you when we 
don't know how to pray for as we ought, we can depend on the Holy Spirit to just guide our, our desires. It's pretty difficult, kind of a difficult thing to explain. But when you pray for something, you don't always know the whole story. But the Lord will guide you through His Holy Spirit on uh, for the particular subject that you're praying for. And unfortunately, most of us who are praying, we don't know... Uh, enough of the story between Ukraine and Russia to pray um, uh, with an awareness, a specific awarenesses. So I want to fill you in on something that from the very beginning, late February when the Russian invasion started, I saw a comment on a radio station uh, news post from a Ukrainian uh, individual and I thought you know what I'm not going to do a web search on this I'm, I'm going to wait to see how long it takes for some independent news source which still I haven't run into how long it's going to take for an independent news source to bring this up but what is this that uh, hasn't been brought up that I, I guarantee you 99% who are listening don't know this but beginning in 2014 when the Crimea uh, secession of sorts began Crimea right on the on the the coast a good chunk of Ukraine on the coast of the Black Sea the northern coast of it the the northeastern coast of it uh, was taken over by Russia but that began Ukraine uh, indiscriminately shelling a couple of provinces on the eastern border of Ukraine where the majority of citizens are Russian and they identify as Russian because they were Russian during the... Uh, USSR days the communist uh, USSR and their uh, forefathers whatever you want to call it were, were Russian um, but when you want to secede from a country because of what nationality you identify with you don't get to say okay we're going to take this land and make it become part of another nation that that does not cut ice so to speak so they can't do that but as far as praying is concerned that is what is behind the eastern borders of ukraine uh supposedly putin is rescuing the russian citizens who now uh, recently have all been given passports and citizenship of Russia so they actually carry uh, dual citizenship which is a pretty common thing in, in a lot of border areas border uh, boundaries in many countries dual citizenship so that may be the end game is that those people will be left alone but it will still be part of Ukraine and who knows what's going to happen to to Crimea Will Ukraine get control of Crimea back? We'll see. But these are the things that we need to pray for. And sadly and unfortunately, children and civilians are dying as a result of shelling of both sides. It's a horrible thing. It, it, it's a pretty difficult thing to talk about. But that is, that is war and we could philosophize about war and everything like that but it really does no good as believers we now we know now you know how to pray more for as we ought to with a little bit more awareness of what's going on so we need to pray for uh peace on the borders of Ukraine a viable solution and a good solution that Ukraine can get back on with their life and, and they can uh, work more towards being uh, a nation, an autonomous nation, and that the two countries 
that border each other, Russia and Ukraine, can get along. And who knows how long. A lot of people are talking about Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, about the north, the far north, and Gog and Magog coming to the south and eventually uh, ending up in the last war, the war of Armageddon in Israel. Uh, we don't know how many more years, decades, or maybe even a day Jesus could come. Jesus could come back, but in the meantime, that is how we can pray more effectually and fervently. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So that's my final thing about Ukraine until uh, some progress begins to be made but until then our prayers are making progress we may not see it but we we are to just continue in prayer for that so now the secondly the slap if you listen to uh, my previous podcast I think it's the second to the last one Um, it's an indie world not an indie world but uh, instead of the Oscars Um, I mentioned that, actually I haven't gotten a chance to mention it then, uh, since then, because I was not aware of what actually happened at the Oscars. I didn't see it when it happened. But I did a search since then, and I believe it is a publicity stunt, either between Chris Rock and Will Smith, or somebody else sold them a bill of goods of hey let's do this and ultimately Will Smith is I believe he's going to leave the entertainment industry and why not he he, he may be so many good things that he has quoted in the past it, it, it tells us that it it is uncharacteristic for Will Smith to, to just walk up and do something like that and and, and that is genuine and and real, especially because of Denzel Washington, who is a spiritual guy, a Christian, born again believer, sitting next to him. Why it, it does not make sense. One because of his character, and, and another, why would you go and humiliate such a reputable person, a friend such as Denzel Washington? and his wife, and all of his friends in Hollywood, why would you do something like that at a time like that? It doesn't make sense. What makes more... And plus, when you freeze frame, you can see Chris Rock uh, put his hands behind his back, grab his wrist, and lean forward, and it's in a stance to be stable. When Will Smith approached him, you would think that normally... You would and uh, reach your hands out and say, "Hey, man, what's going on?" or whatever. But he braced himself and he knew what was coming. And he there's a photo that is not available anymore. But the day after it, a guy at my work showed it to me. It was him squinting his eyes, leaning forward, and bracing himself before Will Smith even said a word. That photo is not available. The only photos are of the action and after the action. So this tells me that somebody knows. And you know how things get scrubbed from the internet and all that other stuff. It, it's it's a publicity of, of sorts. Either Will Smith and Chris Rock are going to have to uh, live with this stunt for the rest of their lives or careers... Or it will maybe even come out. But about 30 years ago, there was another comedian. I can't remember his name. Uh, he he was he's famous from the show with um, Vinny. What's his name? Vinny something. <laughs> A little short Italian guy. The, the guy that played the penguin on Batman. Um. Anyhow. It was a comedian 
from the show Taxi, the TV sit- situation comedy Taxi. Well, he was on the David Letterman show, and then there was a World Wrestling Federation uh, wrestler who got up and said, well, what kind of a man are you? And he slapped him. It wasn't until, I don't know, 20 years later, 10 years later, after the comedian had passed away, that this wrestler admitted that it was a publicity stunt. So that was a very shocking and horrible thing that they had to live with for for years uh, until the passing away of that comedian. And the, the the wrestler finally admitted that it was a publicity stunt. So it was already done. And possibly Will Smith and Chris Rock got together and said, Hey, let's do this again. Who knows? But it, uh, of the body language and everything else, the nature of the reason for slapping and, and the nature of walking up, the people surrounding... Will Smith and and him just suddenly in the middle of laughing at a joke it seemed like he was too late for the timing of for him to to appear angry in front of the camera he was still laughing and suddenly you know they blame it on his wife that she gave him a death stare because it was an insult when you really think of it even both of them went from laughing and she and she would follow the cue of knowing of a publicity stunt before will smith did will smith was a day late and a dollar short on realizing that oh here here came the insult and he stuck to plan walked up there and did the fake slap it just doesn't make sense and i believe that we're gonna uh i'm not alone but (laughs) i believe we're gonna see it it's gonna come to light but the uh sometimes these are a blessing in disguise it, it, it it's it's a uh a, a, a ve- uh, to use a publicity stunt such as that would be a vehicle for will smith leaving the entertainment industry and chris rock his tickets went from forty seven dollars a show to over a thousand dollars a show now and he's becoming a lot more uh, financially successful in his concerts. You could go to Las Vegas and see something for $57 or, or $105 for somebody who is very, very reputable. Um, but to go from $47 to over $1,000 a show booked, his whole tour is now booked. It, it's it's pretty amazing. So sometimes things are a blessing in disguise and sometimes uh, you have to live with what you did. How can they come out and say this was a stunt? Who knows? In Hollywood, pretty much any, anything. And then, of course, you look at the ratings of the Oscars. Been steadily declining. Last year was the worst uh, um, ratings in a almost 100-year history of the Oscars. So that's my take on that. I, I got through this. I covered both things, Ukraine and and the Oscars slap. So now let's go to Tracy Bickford. Hope I didn't bore you guys. Uh, The song Higher Above, and I urge you to go to YouTube and look for the song Rattlesnake. If you think that that, uh, Crime of Passion was a scary song, (laughs) listen to Rattlesnake. And uh, so I believe that the, this new song that was just released last Tuesday on the 29th of March 2022 by Tracy Bickford. Um, it was kind of a, a sequel to Rattlesnake. So look up Rattlesnake, but coming up is their another brand new release from a couple of months ago, uh, Higher Above, with Imran Ahmed. And that will be followed by my good friend Jerry Dominka. I was finally able, able to see him last night, Thursday, because I got off early uh, from work for one. And I still would have been able to make it if I would have worked the whole day. But it's pretty difficult to go to a Tuesday, a Thursday concert, you know. But after uh, about a year, I haven't seen him. But look up Jerry Dominka also. And... 
Higher Above will be followed by my good friend Jerry Demink with a Chicago blues song, and that followed by uh, the Hot Rod Jerry Demink Band's version of Ghost Riders. On the Lookout Guy, I'm Michael Tobin, your host for the Lookout Guy on the Lookout Guy podcast. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. 
<laughs> right. Yeah, that dude in the background. Get away from my barbecue! That, that was a bass player. And uh, I just want to say a few more good words about my friend Jerry Demink. Um But first, the drummer. Kudos to the drummer. Uh, he was a guest drummer. Uh, Jerry needed another drummer. Uh, his other normal drummer was uh, predisposed. You know how bands are. But the Jerry, Hot Rod Jerry Demink band is one of those project bands. They don't have the same people for all, all these decades and everything. Uh, but as far back as I remember meeting Jerry Demink, uh, 13, probably about 20 years ago, his, his uh, longest time drummer is... Uh, Danny Wasson and I, and I call him uh, uh, Animal you know the, the drummer on, on, on the Muppets uh, he's a real wild and crazy dude phenomenal drummer but everybody who has played with Jerry Demink have all been phenomenal uh, but the bassist is uh, Matt Gorman and last night's drummer Paul Cambaro he adapted to every song and to Jerry's uh, conducting uh, skills you know just adapted to every song and if you're local in the area you know of Jerry Demink look him up if you don't know him he went from Muddy Muddy Waters Johnny Cash Buck Owens um Carlos Santana, all kinds of stuff, and, and and enough can't really be said about the performance that uh, the Jerry Hot Rod Jerry Demink band does. But the drummer was just phenomenal. I mean, they did some amazing feats between the bass, the drums, vocals, and the lead guitar. It's awesome. So kudos to the band and Jerry Demink. He he's one of those guys that there 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 isn't anything that he wouldn't do for a friend he showed up when i was doing a homeless ministry in downtown san diego to downtown san diego's longest continuous running homeless ministry since the 1950s and ultimately because of these times we're in just recently a couple of months ago they had to shut down because they didn't have 10 million dollars to renovate their property they own half a block and the staff all had to find somewhere else to move to or to minister at or to go to and that's a sad situation so pray for the staff of the former staff of god's extended hand ministry lots of uh phenomenal um Christian workers, you know, some of them are licensed, ordained, and not ordained, they're just laborers, laborers of love, pray for that ministry, pray for those who uh, had to leave, pray for the homeless wherever you're at, but he showed up a couple times, I, I, I think he actually may have even showed up three times within the past 30 years that I've been uh, ministering with uh, God's extended hand and uh, awesome so kudos to uh, Jerry Demink for that he does worship at his church right nearby where I live also and <clears throat> um, but anyhow what an awesome awesome band and, and along with Jerry showed up the last two times that he showed up with uh, one of his other drummers Chris uh, Giorgio awesome awesome guy so I didn't want to end this episode without saying a few more uh, good words for my good friend Hot Rod Jerry Demink and my good friend Tracy Bickford and Imran Ahmed. This has been a Coast to Coast episode on the Lookout Guy from Florida to California, country blues, and uh, as well as... The song Higher Above, which was a collaboration with Imran Ahmed, who hails all the way from Pakistan. He, he is like the Eddie Van Halen of Pakistan. I kid you not. And you know, for the longest time, it's been bugging me because of the style that Imran Ahmed 
uh, does with this guitar. It's like, who does he remind me of? And I'm trying to think of all these names. But Joe Satriani, I think that's how you pronounce the name. Joe Satriani is 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 who uh, the way Imran Ahmed plays guitar reminds me of. So look up Joe Satriani. He's he's out there performing and everything. Uh, but look up Imran Ahmed Project X on YouTube. Look up Tracy Bickford on YouTube, and look up Jerry Demick. Uh, Facebook and YouTube for all of them. All right, you guys, God bless you. Thank you for joining me on the Lookout Guy podcast. I'm Michael Tobin, your Lookout Guy. Until next time.